Hello, everyone, and welcome to From Grass to Food in Under One Year. Let's hear it for our UMass Emeritus faculty band, Industrial Waste. Thank you so much for coming to help dedicate the UMass Permaculture Garden. I apologize for the rain, but the plants do not. <laughs> So my name is Meg Little. I'm a senior who's been working with UMass Permaculture for the past year. And today I have the honor of telling you a little bit about our beautiful garden and introducing our speakers, which will be Chancellor Holub, Directory of Auxiliary Services Ken Toon, Sustainability Specialist Ryan Harb, and internationally acclaimed author, anti-hunger activist, and food policy reformer, Francis Morlepay. <laughs> To conclude the ceremony, we will officially dedicate our garden. So I'd like to share the story of how this project came to be the flourishing garden that you now see. The groundwork for, the groundwork for permaculture on campus was laid 10 years ago with a project called Garden Share, a student-run community garden on campus. The, ide the idea for this garden came about in the fall of 2009 in a class called Sustainable Agriculture. The final project for this class was come up with some way to change the world. Period. So it's a pretty big project. A group of students decided to work together and to focus on food locally. So one day they were sitting at Franklin, at Franklin Dining Commons, brainstorming, looking out at the grass lawn, and they thought, what would it look like to have students growing food for students right here on campus? So they split up this project. Some students looked at, looked at plants and designs, talked to chefs to see if having fresh foods to use was something they'd actually be interested in. And it turned out, it was. Some students talked to administrators to see if there was support and finance for a project like this. And it turned out that there was. So the class ended, but the project didn't. Students con continued to move it through administrative channels until they hit a bri brick wall. UMass had plans to use the site for a temporary parking lot. <laughs> So it looked like that was it. What more could they do? And the project was dropped. A few months passed, and administration decided they no longer needed a parking lot on the site. And with that, the permaculture garden came back as a possibility. Auxiliary Services contacted Ryan Harb, a recent graduate who had just finished his master's thesis on turning his front yard into a permaculture garden. Last fall, he got on board with the project and put together the first student committee. This group worked on all the different factors needed to make this initiative a success. We hosted events, contacted media, and in October, we sheet mulched this entire quarter acre site, which involved over 150 volunteers moving 250,000 pounds of organic matter in less than two weeks. We then let the garden rest over the winter, and in March, we held a design charrette. This charrette consisted of over 100 students, faculty, staff, five college students, and even people from out of state who all gave up their Saturday for a garden that didn't yet exist. At the end of the day, we had about 40 designs. We gathered ideas from all these designs and cr constructed our own permaculture design. Then in May, we started planting. Every plant you see in this garden was planted no earlier than the end of this past May. So this garden is very much in its infancy, and we have a long way to go. Over the summer, we had 14 students working on the garden, as well as working on campus education, involving local community groups, school groups, and continuing the media push so that the Amherst community and beyond knows what we're doing. Which brings us to today. We have a new passionate student committee. We've been harvesting for about a month, and today students get to sit in Franklin and eat food while looking out at where this food is grown. And we have a sample of that for you all to enjoy today. So this is just the first of many harvests from this garden. Countless people have contributed to making our garden a reality, including our first speaker today, Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts, Robert C. Holub. Under Chancellor Holub's leadership, the university has prioritized sustainability. During his administration, he's enacted environmental reform by signing the pre President's Climate Commitment, by overseeing the development of UMass's Climate Action Plan, by hiring UMass's first sustainability manager and encouraging students to influence policies and programs involving campus sustainability. The UMass Permaculture Initiative has thrived thanks to this foundation that Chancellor Holub helped create. Please welcome Chancellor Robert C. Holub. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really delighted to be here. I was here in uh, May when uh, the plants were first put in the ground, and it's really an honor for me to be here today when the garden is being dedicated. This is, this is a, a wonderful day for UMass Amherst. Now, there are many ways to decipher the word permaculture, agriculture that is self-regenerative and so is permanent. The part we might take for granted is the culture part, but that is a very important part. Societies are based around food customs and food ways. It was a German philosopher who said, you are what you eat. It sounds better in German because it's, a, it's kind of a pun. Man ist, was man ist, right? So, and that was Ludwig Feuerbach, I believe, who said that. And how we eat defines how we are from religious and cultural identity to the health of a population and whether a society is sustainable. When you change the way people eat, you change a culture. This can happen slowly over time in the form of revol or rapidly in the form of revolution. The permaculture garden is part of a revolution in the name of ecology, of health, of locavorism, a word that I had to figure out what it meant, locavorism. <laughs> you know that word, eating local. Everyone knows that except me, I think. <laughs> of sustainability. A revolution in farming is as much a social experiment as it is an agricultural one. So it's only fitting that UMass Amherst, which used to be Mass Aggie after all, founded as an agricultural school, would have the wisdom and the acumen to blaze a trail for a revolution in farming. College campuses are experimental, intentional communities. They are utopias where ideas get tried out and tested sometimes before they are, are embraced by the general public. Couple that with a farmer's knack for problem solving and you have a movement on your hands. This new garden, envisioned, initiated, reclaimed, its half a million tons of earth moved by the hands of students is a unique and empowering embodiment of our already green profile. It is leadership like this that has brought us into the top 20 national research universities for campus sustainability. We are justly proud to value sustainability at UMass Amherst. Through our green building guidelines, our new energy efficient power plant, the fact that 30% of the food served to the populous campus community is locally grown, our sustainable food and farming major, and above all, an enlightened student body that cares about the environment and about the future. While the garden is at present a little small to feed a campus of 30,000 people, it shows the way we might go toward our pledge of achieving complete carbon neutrality by 2050. And with students like ours, who are shovel to soil activists, I would not rule anything out. If you didn't get to taste the garden's produce at the world's largest stir fry, you can find it on the Friday UMass Farmer's Market. I personally can vouch for the quality of our permaculture cherry tomatoes. UMass Amherst has a philosophy of green, of grow your own, of being a local hero by being a locavore. I, command, I commend all of UMass's local heroes of the day, Ryan Harb, Ken Toon, Nathan Aldrich, and all of the UMass students, as well as students from the five colleges who have brought this garden into being and who are going into the world to teach about it. They are visionaries of a small planet. This day is for them and for the future. Thank you.